if you watch this show, too, we don't do talking points. I know there are a lot of Republicans who do. I just am passionate about certain issues. I mean, uh, if you even look at like our show map, it'll just say, hey, we're going to talk about Trump on this. We're going to talk about the, uh, the Orville Redenbacher Dam. I just forgot the name of it. And then we <laughs> kind of free flow with it. We just have certain topics that matter to us. But listen, there's nothing more frustrating than someone coming on who's spouting a party line. And so if you felt that way, too, I mean, that would piss me off. We've had people, I won't name names, not gay Jared knows where it was so uncomfortable. They just came on like, Obama is a bad president. Like, it's a meme. They're going to get 50,000 right. likes. <laughs> and that course. sucks. That makes for a horrible yeah. show. Yeah. Well, you know, like, I feel like people get stuck in these generalizations. And one of the things that I find myself, I'm in such a weird place because I'm, you would probably say I'm more left than I am right, but I'm kind of neither. I'm in some no, weird No, I don't place. think that. I think you're more right than left. I think you yeah. haven't come to grips with it yet. Yeah. Ah, that's funny. I well, really don't. I, I honestly, I really think that's the case because you see, here's why. And this is what I, this is a compliment. Um, but the fact that you feel compelled to even care about the constant attacks I get, tell me that you've recognized there's inherent bullying in the political system. And that's kind of coming from the left. I don't think you're a conservative at all, but I think you're a free speech and a free thinking advocate, which kind of eliminates you to, from today's regressive left. Isn't that bizarre? I mean, the, when I was a kid, my parents were hippies. And I grew up thinking that the left was all the people that were trying to stop this unjust war in Vietnam. And, you know, they were trying to uh, enable the civil rights movement to succeed and enable free speech and uh, enable people to speak freely. Right. That's just not the case anymore. We're in some weird down is up and up is down time. Yeah. And uh, for people like myself who do have a lot of left wing ideas, you know, who do support gay marriage, who do support so many uh, what you would consider left left ideas. Yeah. You find yourself in this this strange place where you're so I'm so opposed right. to so much of these attacks on free speech and so much of the uh, aggre- I mean I don't even want to call it bullying because it's more of a mob mentality thing. Right. It's kind of scary. Yeah. Like the Berkeley thing with Milo was scary. Yeah. You know, yeah. and this mischaracterization mis- mischaracterization of his positions on things is scary. They're making it out like he's this evil hate monger who wants genocide right and this is all just to justify some of the crazy things that they're doing smashing starbucks windows lighting cop cars on fire you know all this chaos that you're seeing that's being perpetrated by the left someone like myself i i cannot identify with that i do not understand it and it puts me at odds but you know i don't i'm like a man without a country now you know, well, I don't, I, don't I would have said that not long ago, but that's where I think now, like, you know, I was not a Trump supporter in the primaries. We talked about that kind of online and, and why I didn't or what the issues I had with him were. Um, but I think in this sort of post political correctness era, it, it's pretty clear as to where you where you're welcome. And it's just not on today's. And I know people you're going to have people going, oh, the left right paradigm. Well, it, it matters when there's one side of the political spectrum where it's an active part of their platform to not believe in freedom of speech. I mean, I come from Canada, where that's what happens when the Liberal Party gets into power. Freedom of speech, there are actual laws put into place that are eliminated. So for me, it's not not everything has to be a right or left issue. You know, marijuana, for example, like I was talking about, I don't think that's a right or left. I don't care. I don't think the federal government should be involved. I think states should be able to do whatever they want, disregarding the other stuff we were talking about. That's mm-hmm. no longer a right or left issue. But the issue of freedom of speech, the issue of, of uh, being open to a form of ideas, of personal decisions, that is excluded from the Democratic platform today as policy. That's why I say when I say left. Yeah, well, there's just a, there's a tremendous amount of dishonesty and a tremendous amount of dishonesty that's being used to justify all this insane behavior. These, you know, yeah. so-called protests that, you know, and I know are nothing more than mobs. Yeah. I mean, we're seeing like the Milo protests in particular when when they have a person that they can single out, like the author at the University of Toronto that we discussed yesterday. Yeah. Where it's just all of a sudden you can't talk. They're going to set off fire alarms. They're going to go crazy and scream and yell. Instead of having a dialogue, instead of having a debate and and sitting down with someone who you may or may not disagree with. And who knows, man, maybe the person's rational. Maybe you can come to an understanding or maybe you can try to figure out why that person thinks that particular way. Instead of that, it's no debate, no talk. Violence is justified. Smash windows. 
punch Nazis. I yes. mean, this, this meme that you keep seeing, punch Nazis. Yeah. It's, it's so bizarre, which is such a strange time. Well, and I think, I think a big reason, too, well, like you said, you, you kind of see uh, I've been attacked a lot. I think when it, when it started online with YouTube, there was sort of the new atheism movement and the liberalism movement were one and the same. So young Turks were always buddies with the people who were sort of these new atheists. And they had a lot of dumb Christians on YouTube going out, you know, if, if there's evolution, why are there still monkeys, you know? And so they lumped right. all Christians into that same boat. Um, but, but that's, and, and so immediately was, we'll, we'll still get comments like, oh, Crowder's logical until he believes in a flying spaghetti monster. Well, is Jordan Peterson not a logical guy? Like there are people who believe in God, who are religious, for lack of a better term, um, who are actually still logical people. And I think that's been a transition, people being dragged in, kicking and screaming to go, you know what, maybe we don't necessarily have to hate these people for this set of beliefs. And I think that's challenged a lot of people on, uh, on the previous left. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. I mean, now guys like Sam Harris, who, who is clearly a left guy, clearly a progressive, is yeah. being labeled as, you know, quote unquote, new atheist, which in some way means you're an Islamophobe and a hate monger and a right. war supporter. It's very strange. And I don't know if you saw or heard rather the podcast between Sam Harris and Jordan Peterson. It, it was really weird. It never got off the ground because it started off where they were trying to figure out what the definition of truth was. Right. And it became this very bizarre intellectual argument between Darwinian truth and real truth and yeah. never got anywhere. I wanted no. to hear them talk about religion because Jordan is a religious guy. And I found that pretty surprising when I'm ha when I had him on my show. Yeah. And uh, I, we didn't really get into it until the last uh, 15, 20 minutes of the podcast. Yeah. He's going to come on again, and I'm going to talk to him about it some more. Yeah. But he he comes at it from a very, very interesting place in that he feels like those – like sort of a Joseph Campbell position or really Carl Jung, like even before Campbell, yeah. where he thinks that these, I, these ideas – that are espoused by religion are like inherently a part of, of the human condition. Just yeah. I find pretty fascinating. Well, you know, this would be a question. Why were you surprised? Do you think to find that Jordan Peterson was a Christian? Uh, because a great many scholars and intellectuals are not, especially when they're opposing. You know, when 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 they're the, the type of people that are opposing the things that he's opposing, like he's he's opposing ideologues, he's opposing people that have this uh, radical idea of change to the point where they're going to come up with seventy eight different gender pronouns they want to enforce by law. Yeah, I just thought it was shocking. You don't see that that much in universities. You don't see it that much in you know in in professors. Well, you don't see that much. I would say you don't see it much in universities or professors because they are the ones pushing the seventy two genders. So I would think I would argue that at that point, honestly, secularism, um, certainly progressivism has become more dogmatic than uh, the faith of someone like a Jordan Peterson or myself. For example, I don't need to say I'm a Christian. Therefore, exactly this, this is, you know, the Bible is not a science book, right? And Jordan Peterson will talk about that. But it is a, a, a moral code of conduct that advises you on how to interact with the physical world. I think that's less dogmatic, allowing room for science, as opposed to someone saying, no, 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 it's hate speech if you don't accept 72 genders. It's hate speech if you don't agree, you know, like that middle school teacher we were talking about. And I, yeah. think, I think your reaction of being surprised is a lot of people. Uh, but I think... That's because a lot of Christians like myself or Jordan Peterson haven't really had the opportunity to express their own views at the table. It's been expressed for me by someone like the Young Turks or for someone like Jordan Peterson by, you know, insert liberal website here for the longest time until now we're straight with the microphone. Yeah, I think as soon as you start talking about a deity, people automatically lump you in with the Moonies and any <laughs> any other fringe group that they can uh, attach you to. But right. what's interesting is you can say you're a Buddhist. And people no go, cares. ah, and no one, not only do no one, but you also like, you get kind of like uh, progressive street cred. Yes. You know? Bob's a Buddhist. He eats tofu. <laughs> he, does, he does tantric so yogi. Yeah, he holds his, his orgasms. Yes. Deep in the body. <laughs> yeah. He internalizes them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's weird what what is accepted and what's not accepted in this world is it, in terms of like the guidelines that you live your life by. As soon as you believe in some sort of a higher power, and I have a lot of friends that have this non-defined higher power, like my good friend Duncan Trussell, who is a, a, a big proponent of psychedelic drugs and meditation, and he's yeah. a deist. He believes that there is some higher power, and he's He's pretty open about it, but, yeah. you know, he's gotten there through psychedelic experiences and meditation and just contemplating the, the greater nature of the universe, which is a weird, weird sort of an angle to go around it. But yeah. 
in a lot of progressive circles, that's more accepted than someone who looks at the positive teachings of someone like Christ right. and ad- adopts those as guidelines to live your life. I think, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, I think the reason for that is a you know, good example you brought up Buddhism. It's because it's sort of situational ethics, right? A lot of it. It's not going to offend a lot of people. Now, if someone says they're a Christian, there is a certain number one with a bullet, listen, mm. This is a dividing line. Christ said, you know, I'm a sword. I believe that this is the truth. You know, it's not all religions are the same. You, you can't be a Christian and believe that. Doesn't mean you have to go out and kill people or proselytize to people who don't like you. But it is much more of a definitive stand than the universe or Buddhism. And I think that's inherently offensive because people feel so judged. Threatening. Yeah. Yeah, it's. It, I think we're in some sort of a weird impasse when it comes to religion and modern culture. Yeah. And um, I think people absolutely need a code of conduct. Yeah. It, it helps you. And it can it absolutely be, in the way I describe it, is like scaffolding for like figuring out how you interface with the world. You, you know, you have things that you can hold on to. And yeah. then from there, you kind of navigate your own way. Yeah. Well, I think that's true. Um, and I uh, listen, uh, that's a big thing. We're not trying to kill people. That's why if you draw a picture of Christ, you don't have to deal with the FBI counterterrorism unit, as I do for Bob Ross drawing Muhammad. Little- his blue eyes. <laughs> did you ever um did you ever read michael Shermer's piece on islam uh probably i would need to pull it up and remember it's a it. recent piece that he, he did uh within the last six months or so but it was about islam being the only religion that didn't go through the enlightenment and it's a really yeah. fascinating really i mean in terms of like yeah. the history of religions and uh, you know it, when you go back in history and look at you know Christianity during the Inquisition, and you see some horrific acts that right. were attributed to Christians, mm-hmm. but the reality is those those acts don't reflect any of the teachings of Christ. Right. So it's 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 real weird, like what we decide is okay and what we decide is not okay and where it fits in history. Well, I, I, and I, I make this argument, not if we don't want to continue on religion, we don't have to. I make the argument where you have to go to the founders of the feast, Christ and Muhammad. And the, the acts of the Inquisitions, first off, people look back, it was a, it, they were largely political. You know, there were more Christians obviously killed than anyone else. This was a political battle fought over sort of sects of a religion. And there's no way to actually reconcile that with teachings of Christ versus Muhammad who did decapitate people, who did beat the shit out of his wife, who did call for the deaths of Christians and Jews. My point is, you know, if you're, you know, like if you're aiming, you're you're a hunter, right? If you're 400 yards out, just a little bit off mark, right? You can be dozens of yards off mark the further out you get. So if you're starting just a little bit off with someone like Muhammad, I think the results are going to be drastically worse because it doesn't allow for the same kind of recorrection. Well, and also, let's just be frank. If you're living in 2017 and you think that if you draw a cartoon of somebody that you should be put to death, yeah. you're not compatible. Watch Good Morning Mug Club live every Monday through Thursday at 10:15 Eastern.